Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk is here. It is ready. It is week 14 in the NFL. Omar joins me as usual. We talk headlines at the top of the show. We talk must-watches, must-misses in the NFL. Various questions, the awards. Of course, a special challenge for Omar this week. And we wrap it all up with legal ramifications. Deep, deep insight this week to Omar's career. Do not miss that legal ramifications. Before we get to the episode, though, don't forget you can catch me doing stand-up comedy this very week, the 15th of December. That is Wednesday, 8 p.m. I am on another late night tonight show. That's right. It is put on by Mike Perkins. He's been on my Running It Back show. He's been on a couple episodes. He puts on essentially an entire Tonight Show live. And I'll be on it doing stand-up comedy, so you can catch that. Tickets are at another late night show tonight dot eventbrite.com. 8 p.m. this Wednesday. Come see me do stand-up comedy. I will look for you. I will see you there. Now, on to the episode. It's week 14 in the NFL. We record this late Sunday night as the Packers finish off the Bears. Yes, that's right. It was a game for about two quarters, and then Aaron Rodgers went Aaron Rodgers. So we record that. Again, lots to talk about. Week 14, Omar's in a good mood. His team win. My team, well, my team essentially fell off the cliff this week. You'll hear about it. We start with it at the top. I don't even want to say Omar talks me off a ledge, but comes pretty close. Week 14 in the NFL, the Sunday Night Talk starts right now. All right, we are recording this 8 p.m. West Coast time. I am here. The Sunday Night Talk is here. Patrick Ramirez, Omar Carmona there. A very excited, good Sunday San Francisco 49er gear wearing Omar Carmona. How happy are you on this Sunday, you know, Omar? I, I'm not going to lie. I was very stressed. You know, we're up 14, and then there it is, just bad throws. You know, it's 20 to 6. This is the time to put your foot on their throat. And Jimmy G, Kyle Shanahan, I'm placing blame on both of them. Just They're just not closing. They let the Bengals back in. <laughs> Bengals tie the game late. Bengals get a field goal, the opening field goal in overtime. So it's uh, if, if you don't score, we're, we're, you know, we're going home. Um, you know, and, and But the 49ers put it uh, a, a dynamic play by Brandon Ayuk who seems to be out of uh, Shanahan's doghouse. But 49ers get the big win. Seven and six now. We're still in the, you know, we're in the wild card positioning. So that's obviously the big news. We're not going to catch the Cardinals. Um, but nonetheless, game, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of my team. Yeah, you see, I knew you wouldn't just be happy. I knew you were going to have more analyt- analytical thoughts about the game other than just yeah. like, oh, oh, what a win. What a great win. Oh, well. We're going to talk about it all. We're recording this start of the fourth quarter. Bears, Packers, a pretty frisky Bears team, at least for the first half. Well, the second quarter, 45 points between two teams. It was (laughs) 0-0. I was was thinking when this game started, all right, I need to think of some reasons to watch this game. I came up with two. My first reason was, was, okay, can Aaron Rodgers drive home an MVP season? with this game. You know, we, we thought there's no way he could ever win MVP now. And now it looks like he's the front runner. Perfect game to drive it home. Second reason, uh, for this, is this a good game to have on while you do something else (laughs) like decorate a Christmas tree or wrap gifts sort of thing. So those are my two reasons to watch ended up being a good game, at least for the first half. Yeah, It, it, it was a good game. But it looks like, you know, the Packers became the Packers and the Bears are the Bears. So The Bears uh, are who we thought they are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did, I don't know if you caught this in the intros when they're doing the player intros. Did you hear Aaron Rodgers say he went to a community college? 
I don't know what. Did you I, hear that? I wasn't sure if I heard it right. Like they're all doing the their intros and they say what college they went to. I think he said he went to a community college. Well, as everyone knows, he's a Berkeley guy. So, and obviously they're very liberal. Obviously, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is now a very well. Look, I'm not going to get into his political views, but I'm sure it's not very <laughs> popular on Berkeley. But I can't imagine he's um, you know, he's a proud. Uh, alum right now okay the bears were up 10-0 we don't know how that happened did you hear this uh, about halfway through the first quarter the bears scored and chris crawlinsworth says this is just wow <laughs> he, he, did it. he did it he did it we heard we heard a, a bunch of wows i heard one spinorama from al michaels and then lastly i'm thinking the bears are in this game they're going toe-to-toe with the Packers, and I'm thinking, hey, you know, the Bears just cannot get rid of Nagy. You know, if they lose this game but it's close, they can't get rid of Nagy after this week. Right, They're going to be right, stuck right. with Nagy for another year if they play tough, right. <laughs> tough and football. And if they win, that saved his job for the year. So, yeah. yeah. So, well, monitored. it is 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Chicago 27, Green Bay 38. We'll update along the way. Headlines. For week 14 in the league, let me rattle off. I got four headlines for you. Headline number one, sound the Lamar alarm. Oh. The battle in Tampa. Battle. De- December that football. A, that was a blowout. That was a blowout. It was, much like this game in reverse. It was a blowout early. And then we had a battle. Third headline, December football is the best football. Yeah. And my last headline going into into the break Coming up next, is it time to have a fair and honest discussion about the league's overtime rules? Okay. <laughs> let's let's before we go through all the all the headlines. Uh, must watches, must watches. I had three. I had two games and one question mark. I had Dallas, Washington, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, Baltimore, Cleveland was my question mark. Ended up being a great watch, and then of course my must miss. My London game was my very own Las Vegas at KC. Where do you want to start? Let's start with your London game because uh, let's just get it out the way. You know what I mean? Like let's just, let's just talk about it. Let's end it for you. We won't talk about it again. Um, we won't talk about the Raiders until next week. How about that? Okay. Um, not smart celebrating on the you know having a little opening pep talk uh, <laughs> on the on the on the Chiefs Arrowhead. Um, you don't want to do that, but you especially don't want to do that if you're going to come out and, uh, you know, first play of the game. <laughs> fumble uh, on the very first play of the game for a touchdown. I mean, you, you definitely, a fum- you don't want to have a fumble six, very first play of the game. I was re-watching that, like, them jumping on the logo because I'm trying to figure out what's going on. If I have any excuse for the first fumble of the game by Jacobs, I would argue, like, hey, that was the defense jumping on the logo. (laughs) We didn't do anything. (laughs) Us on the offense didn't do that. If if you're an underdog, you're going into KC, you've been struggling all season, and you want to go jump on the logo? You're, you think you're the top dog in this stadium? Right. How do you want to give them more fuel? And then they come out and just lay an egg. They are terrible in all facets. You know it's bad when Renfro is fumbling the ball. Right. Uh, and, and and But he was the only bright spot, aside from the fumble, he was the only bright spot the Raiders had. Yeah. So, you know, they, they did that thing to you, Patrick, again. They started off, we're looking like, wow, this team is going to make a real strong push for the division. They've been doing that the last few years to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Last, last four or five years, it's been strong starts. And then they just come crashing and end up, right, you know, 500, just below 500. They're a subpar team. And 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 now, you know, there's, there's, there's some serious questions. Uh, whatever new coach that they bring in, Derek Carr, I mean, he, I, he's not married to Derek Carr. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I think we're looking what possibly can be Derek Carr's last few starts in in Los uh, Las Vegas. It's time to have a fair and honest discussion about keeping Derek Carr in the silver and black. Yeah, I'm watching the game, and just every third down, the Chiefs convert. And at some point, I'm thinking, this is this this game. I want to turn it off. If right. this this is the game, 
what I say to all my friends, my friends who are like, say, Democrat and watch Fox Fox News, and on the opposite, the Republicans who watch CNN, I just want to ask you guys, why do you want to make yourself angry? Just turn right. it off. Just and, and I'm like that with the game. I'm like, why do I want to make myself myself angry? Just just watch another game. Just turn it off. Take a break from all this game. Yeah. Every everything the Chiefs were doing was correct. Everything the Raiders were doing was incorrect. Yep. It's just so brutal to watch. And the Chiefs almost got 50 points on them. And the ultimate insult, the Raiders finally score a touchdown and they miss the extra point. Yep. It could it couldn't have gone any worse. Yeah, it was the perfect was perfect nail in the coffin too. Just just an egg. And we had to talk shit at the beginning too and dance yeah. on the logo like a like a couple of badasses that we are. And then fumble on the very first play. All right, let's forget about that game. The London game. And let's go to um my other must watch. Let's go Dallas at Washington. Dallas is now nine and four. I looked at the stats of this game. Dak had 211 yards, one touchdown, two picks. The whole team rushed for 122 yards. I don't know how Dallas put up this many points, yet they win, and they're good. I think that Micah Parsons guy sacks the quarterback every he, third play. It, I mean, that, 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 that's something where, you know, the networks, the analysts, the experts, they're throwing his name out there with Lawrence Taylor's. And and that says something, and I'm not gonna say it's not deserved because he is he is putting on a show, and I'm maybe, not a Dallas fan. You know that. Maybe a sneaky MVP candidate. Now that I think about it, why not throw oh, him in there, right? He he could. I mean, he is he is playing some unreal football. This this young, uh, I, I just hope uh, he continues. And I hope he stays healthy. We talked about like beginning of the season, Dak, Zeke, you know, offense, offense, offense. I guess it's more of a defensive team. You think about it. They're the ones making the plays. I mean, Dak has 200 yards. <laughs> the one touchdown, two picks. That's their offense. But, 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 the, the player that I find most uh, interesting is uh, Trayvon Diggs because, of course, he's leading the league in interceptions. The, what, streak of like five straight weeks he had a pick. But he gets burned a lot. <laughs> and so, <laughs> like, such an interesting player. You don't know if he's going to come up with like a Pro Bowl type play or he's going to get burned for 60 yards. Yeah, I I don't I feel like Dallas is nine and four, and we still don't even know Dallas. We don't right. know exactly what's going on, and yet they're nine and four. They're cleaning up. They're running away with the division. They're gonna get a home field playoff game, and yet I'm still nervous about about Dallas. They went into Washington. Washington com- comes back on them a little bit, but they handled business. They handled it. So Dallas nine and four, moving on. Baltimore at Cleveland. I didn't think this was going to be a good game, and yet this game was pretty pretty entertaining. Well, yeah, it was. It was a great and and, and Washington hung in there. Um, you know, they, they they put that kid out, Allen, because you know Heineke was basically ineffective, and, and then Allen gets him back in, falls back, you know, falls short of the comeback. So it's going to be interesting to see who you know if if, if Allen's going to be getting reps um, this week. And his if Heineke's job is is threatened, but it was a, it was a great game, and I love seeing that rivalry produce great games. Yeah, that's a that's a matchup where you just know you're going to have a good game. Dallas Washington is a good yeah. one, so good for the league. But yeah, Dallas handled handled business, and I don't even know what the hell Dallas does on offense, and yet they're yet they're good. Did you watch Baltimore Cincinnati or sorry Baltimore Cleveland? I did. That's another game that I did watch. Um, I think that Lamar's uh, injury, uh, obviously, you know, you hope he's okay. Uh, it did look serious. And so I, I think what's going to be, I think a lot of interested NFL fans are going to be, um, you know, uh, very interested in what happens as far as the results on tomorrow's test. But, um, you know, I think when Lamar's out and a team with the, the talent that Cleveland has, you would think that it'd be a blowout from then, then uh, you know, and, and and Baltimore had a chance at the end. Yeah, they really did. Lamar goes out, and the backup comes in, ironically, looks and plays just like Lamar. Like, he moves oh. like Lamar. It's really weird. I didn't know uh, Huntley, I think his name is. I didn't know he so was good. different than Lamar till the announcer said his name. Yeah, he, he ran well. Yeah, he really did, and he almost brought him back, which... Here was the ending sequence of that game after the 
after um, Baltimore gets the touchdown. Tucker goes in, and they say he's perfect on extra points this year. He nails the extra point. They have to kick an onside kick. He kicks the onside kick. They get it, so they have the onside kick. And I'm thinking, oh, this is set up perfectly for Tucker to win the game. He has the longest field goal in history this year. He's perfect on extra points. They just got an onside kick. He's going to win it, but Cleveland held tough, and they win the game. And Baker Mayfield on the sideline looks like a fan. He is scared to death <laughs> that they're going to lose this game, and they pull it off. So maybe we, uh, maybe Cleveland's in it with a little bit of feistiness, and Baltimore has, I don't know, Baltimore has is beatable. Baltimore's beatable by anybody. Baltimore is beatable. Bill's beatable. Uh, another game. Bills. What, what happened there? I mean, I, I mean, it's they they showed a ton of heart, did they not? I mean, that game looked over. You know, stick a fork in them. I gotta hand it to Josh Allen, but still, it's another loss. Maybe they're not in that situation. You know, if 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 um, you know, if they if they have their their shit together in the beginning of the game, you know what I mean? They let they let it get way out of hand. Yeah, they were down a bunch, and then they battled. My notes were number one. I really like Tom Brady getting in that little fight at yeah. the beginning in the first quarter. Like he gave kind of like the the like I'm gonna give you a chest bump, but I don't really want to fight. Move. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bump you and then take two steps back. So Tom Brady already already had a little bit of a fight. Buffalo battled back, and then here's what I like: when they go into overtime, the two captains come out. They usually send out for the overtime captains like the punter or a returner or something. Josh Allen goes out for the overtime coin toss. He calls the coin and he gets it. He gets heads. So I like that. Here's what's funny about the overtime too. I like with whatever team loses the coin toss, the captain just walks away and the ref has to go get him and ask him what side of the field. He defers, yeah. Right, he defers. right. They're like, all right. What side right. he wants, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'll take heads, and it's tails, and they just leaves, and the ref has to go call him and says, what side do you want? So um, what happens? Buffalo gets the ball. They punt. Tampa Bay um, – sorry, did Tampa Bay – yeah, yeah, Buffalo punted, and then Tampa Bay gets the win. And then I don't know if you saw Josh Allen walking off the field. He looked destroyed. He looked like he was going to cry or he had just been crying. This looks like it really, really hurt him. So I that was my favorite game of the day. Buffalo Tampa Bay going head to head. That was an awesome game. Yep. That 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 was a great game. I love seeing Josh Allen. He's he's a real you know gritty quarterback. And I, I you know I, I think you know, you know, I've I've been high on Josh Allen the last two years. Um He was your man crush last year. Yeah, you know, in a way still is. I, I just think I, I think <laughs> the world of him. Um I think he's gonna lead Buffalo to big things. I just it wasn't the season I even thought, you know. They were they were my Super Bowl representative out of the AFC this year, and I'm not saying it can't. Oh, be really? Done. Am I locking in your prediction already this early in the show? You know, well, it was it was early. I, I'll say that it was my first week's prediction that they would be. <laughs> in the well, I will admit that now. Now they're going to work to do. They have a lot of work to do, but you know, there's still plenty of football left to be played. Especially we got we you know this year there's an extra game, so all teams have what four games left after this week so we'll see all right your team san francisco at cincinnati game underrated game of the day second overtime game of the day and i'm watching the game and i'm thinking have we not given jimmy g enough credit the last couple weeks he looks damn good out there He's yeah, throwing bullets. But, what? What? You, you you don't agree? No one, Jimmy G. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not just wasn't. I'm just. Ha I haven't been very high on Jimmy G lately. Why not? No, uh, I think sometimes he's a liability. <laughs> Listen to you. See, you can never be fully happy, even though your team won, and and Jimmy G looked good. I I tell you, Kittle might have had the greatest catch I think I've ever seen in slow motion. I don't know if you saw that. He is stretched out almost horizontal for that one play. That was that, awesome. That, that guy needs a wheelbarrow for those balls. He that guy is something else. He he's just, uh, you know. I know. I know. The big talk is which which is the, the the elite tight ends of the league. I know. Basically, the conversation begins and ends with um, you know Kelsey out of Kansas City and Kittle. Uh, but but he's Kittle's up there. I mean, I, I I'm not going to disagree with. 
too many people that say that you know that he's better than 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 Kelsey. I mean, they're both phenomenal tight ends, but it's it's one and two, a one, a you know, uh, um, a one, a two, or whatever you want to say that they're they're great. Or he was catching everything, and it's kind of to the point where you say like, well, just throw to Kittle every down, and they essentially did do that. Yeah. I think they targeted him seventeen times. He had like fifteen catches. And he's just such a force out there. And Jimmy G, that's Jimmy G's security blanket. I'm surprised you're not at least on Jimmy G's side. What do you think Jimmy G's – give me Jimmy uh, Jimmy G approval rating. Now? Yeah, yeah. Give me your instant thought on Jimmy G. He just won a game for you in overtime. He took you to the Super Bowl. I think uh, – yeah. Why I is think he – No. Why is he no, such a hard I, sell to you? No, I just – he's just – when I want to believe in them, he, he just disappoints me. So, <laughs> Does Jimmy G need a new nickname? You know, all we do is call him Jimmy G. What about a new nickname for him? Oh, that's the only one he can have at this point. That's it? No. no. Well, he had Joe Montana, had Joe Cool. I don't think Steve Young ever had a nickname. Give me, give me if, if, if he can pull a playoff run and get back to the Super Bowl – and, and we can maybe call him Jimmy Rings. I will. I'll take that. Oh, I'll Jimmy that. Rings is good. Yeah, he's got to win one though. Got to win one. What about Jimmy the Great? We could use the G as great. Got to win one. So nothing less than a Super Bowl. Nothing less than a Super Bowl is going to be acceptable to you. Right. And then um, overtime again, perfect. The guy loses the coin toss and then walks away. <laughs> yeah. From it. So where where do you stand in overtime? Do we I'm think a, we need to, to redo I, these rules? I like the fact that the NFL cut it by five minutes. Okay, because I always I always appreciated the argument of you had sixty minutes to win. You know, why are we gonna give you another fifteen? You know what I mean? So yeah. I do appreciate uh the fact that they they cut it by five minutes, so it's now it's ten minutes. Cause it really only gives you know, because you know, and look what happened with the 49ers Bengals. You know, the Bengals kick a field goal. Which then now the Fortnite. Bengals with the if, if the Niners kick a field goal, right? Yeah. Um, so, but but when you think about it, by the time the Niners were done with that drive, it was either going to be a field goal and that was going to be a tie at that yeah. point. You know, that was going to be a tie because there was not enough time for. I don't think the Bengals to really. Yeah, I'm not saying it was impossible, but it, they they were they really weren't going to have much time left. Yeah, they've set it up to where the first possession, if the first possession ends in a field goal attempt or a long enough drive, the other team's going to get the ball back with four minutes left, and then that's it. It's just going to be let's, okay, one last drive for you. So, right. I always I like the overtime rule. I just think they should just play it out for time, not not first touchdown wins. Everybody gets a possession. I think just play it out for time. So you wouldn't. So what you're saying is you wouldn't mind seeing quarterbacks taking a, a knee at the end of overtime because the time's the, running out. At the end of overtime. Yeah. Mm, that's like, true. It would end up. Yeah. Like the, it would like the part of the great thing about overtime is like it's a walk off celebration. Yeah, that's true. That's one benefit of overtime. Right. Say. Yeah. Say you didn't. Uh, yeah. You would just run out the clock. What do you What do you think about this? Because I've never liked the coin toss. What about this? What if we go baseball rules and the home team always kicks off, therefore getting the ball in the second half? What if we just eliminate the coin toss and we do it like baseball? Home team always kicks off. And then for overtime... Yeah, that that wouldn't be fair to the Jets that for some reason like play like <laughs> a, a great team and next thing you know they're kicking two Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, but they get it in the second half. Well, let's be honest. Football in general has not been fair to the Jets. You got a good point there. <laughs> I think overtime can be tweaked. I'm not fully happy with the fact that uh, how how they how it's played now. Uh, where are we at? Game check. Four minutes left in the game. Chicago 27, Green Bay 45. So maybe the MVP run is making a big, big lead right now by uh, by Aaron Rodgers in the game. All right, other games. Any other games impress you? I had Jacksonville, Tennessee, and I just put Trevor Lawrence and a big old question mark. In the sense, 
if Trevor Lawrence was on any other team, wouldn't we be bashing him? Wouldn't we be saying, oh, this is a bust. He doesn't know. But it seems like we have not had one single thing to say about Trevor Lawrence and how bad the Jags are this season. I don't know what's going on there. Well, let me tell you something. The reports that came out from on Urban Meyer, it's very disturbing. And I don't think he's going to be a pro football coach next week, next year. Yeah, I, I think this is a one-year thing. Is He doesn't seem interested, <laughs> for one thing. Um, he's losing a bunch of games. Uh, I that was a weird report. I would like some, I would like some source confirmation at some point on these reports. Though it seems like reporters can throw out whatever they want, and if they're wrong, there's no consequences. Though, so I, I still need more before I hear all that. So, but Lawrence, do, do we think Lawrence is good? I have no idea. I I, I mean maybe under another coach, it's not going to be with it's not going to be with Urban Meyer. So. They're going to need to bring like a quarterback whisperer type coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. We can't give him up on him yet. We gave him a rookie head coach. We got, we had a rookie QB and already a team that wasn't that great from the year previous, but it seems like just say Justin Fields is being under way more scrutiny than Trevor Lawrence. And it seemed like, it seems like everybody's giving him a pass this year, maybe because of the coach right? as well. Uh, who are they at? Tennessee back on track. What other games? New Orleans at the Jets. That could have very easily been the London game. Yeah, that's not a good game, but Atlanta at Carolina, another London game. Seattle gets the win against Houston. I didn't know Houston has only won two games this whole season. Yeah, terrible team. Terrible. We, for- team. we forgot about Houston, rightfully so. The Chargers win. Chargers, uh, Chargers and I, I think and, they have a game against the Chiefs coming up. That will be very, very telling. And Justin Herbert had one of those, this is the Justin Herbert we've been expecting. You know what I mean? He had one of those games. So, granted, it was against the Giants, but, Matt, did you see that ball he threw 65 yards in the air? That was impressive. He looks like he like if you and I were throwing a children's football. <laughs> he has yeah. such grip on the ball, and he can wing it from anywhere. Yeah, he was back on track. So Chargers, we wrote them off somewhat a few weeks ago. They're peaking, you know. It's, and it's like anything else. We don't have to. We shouldn't make any predictions until week fifteen and a half of the, of the season because right. the league is the season is so long. But they're peaking, trending up. I think I got all the games. So let's take it to if the season were to end today. Here's your division leaders. NFC, Dallas, Green Bay, I'm, I'm Tampa listening, Bay. Just getting a, I'm grabbing a drink, but go on. All right. I will pontificate. Uh, <laughs> NFC, division leaders, Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Arizona. I think all those stay put. I think every team that I just listed yeah, I wins. Think, I, I think now they, they are going to win their division. I don't see Green Bay being caught by the Vikings. I don't see the Rams catching the Cardinals. I don't see the Bucks and 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 basically, uh, you know, the Bucks being caught by anyone. That that's just a terrible division, uh, unless you're the Bucks. Um, I and I, I don't think the Cowboys are gonna uh, lose their lead. So I, those, those are those. That's you. You can lock those. You can lock them in. Yeah. Are you making your prediction? Your yeah. oh, those are those are the four. I'll go with that prediction. Those are the four division champions out of the okay. NFC. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to write this down. You say our current leaders are going to be the division winners. And now, we the drama, play. though, is going to be in what order they come in as a top four. There's, gotcha. there's the drama. Okay, gotcha. Um, I could see the Rams getting feisty. They play the Cardinals tomorrow. We don't know uh, if Kyler Murray or Colt McCoy could start in a week or two. We don't know. It's up in the air. Kyler Murray essentially took a month off <laughs> from yeah. from playing. He took a month off, and now he's back. So, okay, AFC, New England, Baltimore, Tennessee, Kansas City. I got one that is going to swap. I'm taking Baltimore out, and I say, screw it. Let's give it to Cleveland. Wow. Baltimore has holes in the ship. They're the Titanic. They hit the iceberg. They can float for another eight and a half hours, but they're taking on water. I think everything is obviously going to depend on Lamar Jackson's injury. But again, 
But then now you're trusting that Baker Mayfield is going to lead the Browns like he should be leading them. So I, I I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. He's in progressive commercials. He he's they can't. He lives in the stadium. He lives in the stadium. He has at least 48 more of those commercials. They probably haven't even aired yet. So they have to air them. So he has to live up to the commercials. So I'm going to say I'm, I got faith in Baker Mayfield now. Okay. You, you got to get hot late. Tennessee sticks with it. KC sticks with it. I can see the Chargers getting that wild card playoff spot. But I say everybody else stays put. Okay. So, okay. So everyone's staying put. Um, yeah, I think the Patriots, because of the Bills' loss today, that was the last glimmer of hope I saw. Um, like you said, the Chargers, can they make things interesting? Yes, but I, I just think now that now now the Chiefs are back to the Chiefs. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. now the rest of the NFL has to take notice that this may be your favorite to go back to the Super Bowl and, and, and maybe win their second title in three years. Uh do we need to just send the apology letter to the Chiefs? Remember how badly oh, yeah. we ragged on them at week on week four? <laughs> yeah. You know what's so funny? This isn't my point. I read this from someone else. Someone said, all right, take the Chiefs. We all look at the Chiefs. They've got a, a six-game winning streak. And we're like, something's wrong with the Chiefs. They're not as fast. They're not as fast. They're not hitting the big plays like they used to. Yeah. And then you take the Patriots, and they've won five games in a row. And we're like... Can they win in a shootout? <laughs> we don't know. At right. some point, we have to ask ourselves, do we just hate winners? Do we right. just hate people who win games? Again, not my point. But I thought that was funny that no matter what, we will find a way to shit on you winning five games in a row. Yeah. Way too early prediction. Lock it in. Here's my prediction. Write it down right now. We are on a collision course to New England versus Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl. That's my lock it in prediction for week 14. Wow. Okay. That's a good one. New Is England, it? Tampa Bay, Super Bowl. Your thoughts? I, I'm telling you, you know, let me tell you how big this is. How big this would be. For my eight-year-old son to ask me, like, what would you think? He asked Locked me today, it in. What would you think of a, of a New England, Tampa Bay? So <laughs> even for him to recognize how big that would be. Okay, would that be the would that be the most watched Super Bowl in the history of NFL? Uh, most watched? Yeah, it would have to be right. What's what was the most watched Super Bowl previous to that? What what was the most let's, iconic Super Bowl in the last five years? Just, we'll one look, of the Brady we'll look into some of those. We'll look into some of those records next week, and we'll we'll pull those. But I I think it's a valid. What what I mean? Tell me a more intriguing story you know what i mean we never we never got the manning bowl super bowl you know what i mean we never got manning bowl but um, we did we did have the intriguing the the 18 and 1 you know the 18 and 0 patriots yeah you know that was that was intriguing you know we watched we had to I don't, I don't care if you're a football fan or not you wanted to see perfection uh yeah, that was a big one i think that philly one was big Let's. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see the highest rated Super Bowls for the last five years. I wonder which one, which one it was, because if we had New England, Tampa Bay, first of all, the storylines galore. We've got, and then plus we have a true NFL season this year. Yeah, Tom Brady won it last year. Right. You could put a little asterisk by it. We, we had we had a Harbaugh Bowl. We had a uh, that was a good one. We had the Harbaugh Bowl. That was the the lights went out bowl. That was okay. good. <laughs> but, uh, that that was uh, the ghost of uh, Bill Walsh put the put the pulled the plug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so right, that was a good one. What is a it? couple? Uh, oh, do we have a? I'm looking at a successful onside kick here. Oh yeah, and it, very score. So we got a, a minute twenty one. Chicago 30, Green Bay 45. I don't know if they have possession of this onside or not. I think they have possession. I just, I don't, can't, they can't advance um, it. Do you have a – oh, oh, I follow. Okay, so they have it. They're just walking back to where it was spotted. I love an onside kick. It, it vexes me that no one has perfected a, a technique to make it essentially a jump ball, a 50-50 shot. It seems right. like it's a 90-10 shot. Now, what do you think about this? You can't advance this. 
Doesn't that seem like, hey, if you get possession of it, take it as far as you can until you're down. It seems against the spirit of the game, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. I'm glad we saw it right here. Can't you also that, not yeah. advance a muff punt? Isn't that a rule too? Right. Like, I mean, why, I mean, like, had that player for the Packers recovered it, he could have advanced it. Yeah, that's true. You can advance it. Why can't I advance it? Yeah, that's true. You know what I was thinking about Tom Brady too? Just the absurdity that he went to a different team and won the Super Bowl. What if Michael Jordan left the Bulls, went to the Orlando Magic, and won the NBA championship the very next year? Doesn't that seem um, crazy to you? And yet we witnessed it with Tom Brady going to the Bucks. Yeah. I don't know that we fully appreciate that. I've been watching a little too much Tom Brady man in the arena the last day and a half. So I'm a little Brady Brady on the brain. Yeah, gotcha. Way too early prediction. What do you got? Way, way too early prediction. Uh, well, like I said, I, I, I think that uh, those division leaders in the NFC are going to be the, the lock-ins. But my... My prediction is Tom Brady wins the MVP. Oh, Tom Brady wins the MVP. There you go. What about a too early Super Bowl matchup prediction? You know, I've been flip-flopping all year, but I'm going to stick with... Um, uh, I, I'm going to say it's going to be uh, a rematch now of last year's Super Bowl. It's going to be Bucks chiefs Wow. I'd watch that. I like the sound of that. All right. Make me angry. I struggled with this one because I don't know if I can make you angry. But how about this? This would make you angry. What if come playoff time, the Niners get into the playoffs. They're a wild card. They even have a home game. What if Joe Montana and Jerry Rice got into a Twitter war with each other? (laughs) <laughs> that would make me very angry. Yeah, yeah, the two royalty of San Francisco. What if they hated it? What if they found out they hated each other? It, it, it's like it's like you're you're a kid and, and your mom your your mom and dad have already divorced, but they're 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 going back and forth. They're still arguing. It's like come on. Yeah, and who suffers? Us, the children. Yeah, the kids suffer. It's like guys, so that, guys, <laughs> you can't do angry. this. It would it would make you angry. You know what I was thinking about Joe Montana. Do you, as an NFL fan or as a Joe Montana fan, do you want more out of Joe Montana? Like, you know, he doesn't announce games. He's not a commentator. He doesn't do a lot with football. He does Skechers ads. Right. Do you want more Joe Montana in your life? I do. I what absolutely would you, do. What would you like to see him do? Be a coach? Be an announcer? Do do like what the Manning brothers do? What do you I, want? He's a smart guy. I, I don't know why he wouldn't want to take like the Elway – uh, you know, VP of player, you know, uh, you know, that, that goes for Steve Young too. Both, both of them, just two bright guys. I just think that right now, Montana, he's got so many business ventures. I think he's got a winery and he's got so much stuff going on. I I can see why he's like, look, he's got a business model and he's following it. Steve Young is, I'm sure he's got some businesses too. Uh, you know, he's, he's a lawyer. Um, and And Steve Young's on Monday night countdown. He's on Monday night countdown. So he's still involved, but. But I think Young is bright enough to, you know, run a team. Um, who knows if he just wants it, you know? Uh, maybe he just doesn't want to, but I think he'd be bright enough to do that. Yeah, I could see Steve Young having those ambitions. I think Joe Montana is a little bit more of a laid-back guy where he says says to himself, why do I want to add stress to my life? <laughs> why do <laughs> I want <laughs> that's gonna be That's what's going to be fascinating about Tom Brady. I don't know if we're going to see Tom Brady again when he retire after he retires. Really? You know, we'll see him. We'll see him uh, Hall of Fame weekend. Well, you know, we'll see him and stuff like that. Anytime they remember a certain team anniversary of a certain team, he'll be around for that. But I don't know if he's going to be want to be like a. Is he going to go into commentating? Is he want to going to? Is he going to go into you know the VP general manager type? I don't know. Uh, An ownership role somewhere? I don't know. Well, who are our right now, in the league right now, who are our playing Hall of Famers who are in the league right now? We got Brady, Rodgers, Russell Wilson. (coughs) Are we talking Uh, about about quarterbacks only? No, any player. Any player. And and I'm wondering what we think each of those players is going to do post-career. We got got J.J. Watt is is a Hall of Famer. Um 
You're right. Uh, uh, Russell Wilson, I believe, will make the Hall of Fame. I'm, okay. I'm not sure about a first balloter, but... Like, Roethlisberger, like, right? Hall of Fame or no Hall of Fame? Roethlisberger is absolutely a Hall of Famer. Uh, absolutely. Um, wow, it, you know... Running back, the you know that's so hard about running backs because their shelf life is just it seems like it's cut short. Yeah. You know, every every seven eight season that's cut short like another year. You know, it seems like now it's like hey five years and you're you're done. Um, yeah, and then we we've seen over and over again that teams can run with about six different running backs if they want. Zeke right. Elliott is going to be nowhere near a thousand yards this year, and wasn't yeah. it just two years ago? He was going to be the highest paid guy ever, right? And now it seems like, yeah, we'll put someone else in there, and uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll be effective. We can still get our yardage. Adrian Peterson will be a Hall of Famer. Uh, oh yeah, technically he's in the league still. That's right. He's still in the league. Um, so let's take Roethlisberger, Rogers, Brady, and H-J-Y. Wilson. What do we think they do oh. post career? J.D. Watt, yeah. Well, let's go those four. Let's just compare those four. Uh, um, so what do you think Roethlisberger does when he retires? I don't know who's going to want – I don't know if people are going to want Roethlisberger to stick around. So. I don't know either. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if people are going to say, like, let's let's put a microphone in front of him. Yeah, I don't know about that that one. That's going to be an interesting one too. Um, Russell Wilson, I can see him being a commentator. I, I really can. Definitely. Uh, um, He's got a personality. He's, he's more Hollywood, you know. His wife, uh, is Ciara, right? So she, you know, mm-hmm. she, she's, you know, in the entertainment business. So I think his, I think his entertainment portfolio is definitely going to increase. Oh yeah, definitely a, a Monday quarterback, a Monday show. I could see him being a lot of personality and liking that gig for sure. He is, he is going. No, he might be one of those guys that has the bigger post career. I don't, as well. I don't see. Uh, if Brady does anything with football, I think it's going to be in the business side of it, like in, in, of it, uh, involved with the Patriots. I think, you know, I think he still re- appreciates the Kraft family and what the Kraft family means to him. So I could see him going back to New England or Tampa Bay. I don't think he would go to another franchise. Um, uh, and I think both franchises would obviously uh, uh, welcome him with open arms. Yeah. Uh, I wonder I, I, how much New England is pissed off that they didn't keep him. Like, well, why not just give in to his needs? It's like, all right, pay the man. You can't let your, your guy go. <laughs> right. Um, and then Roethlisberger, interesting too. Um, you know, historically, the, the the it's just the Rooney family that's run the, you know, run the Steelers. And, 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 and Roethlisberger's not a Rooney. So, no. um, uh, I don't, I don't, you know, it's not, you know, Terry Bradshaw. And then you... Terry Bradshaw and, and Roethlisberger have never had the greatest relationship um, off the field. So, and and I don't know. That's an, I think I could see also Roethlisberger being a um, a commentator. Um, I can but, see him giving it a shot. And yeah. See, like, say he does it for a year and then and then doesn't do it after that. But I could see him yeah. trying it. But of those four, I don't see them going up the coaching ranks. Either of those four. Right. Right. All right. Franchise, one-year deal, or sent as a coach edition. I've been watching a lot of college ball this week as well because it's bowl season coming up. And I don't know where you are on this, but I've really lost touch with college ball. I have too, Patrick. I When I, I remember we were growing up, you, you and I would talk a lot about college ball growing up. You know, the, 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 the three major Florida teams, Notre Dame football, right. um, UT, uh, then, right, you know, West Coast teams. <laughs> well, I I always tell everybody I I learned geography through college football. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, Dad, where's Penn State? Oh, that's in Pennsylvania. Dad, where's Notre Dame? Oh, that's in Indiana. Is that a good school? Oh, yeah, that's a good. School. Dad, what's Yale? They have a football team. Yeah. That's how I learned where colleges were were through college football. So, and I have totally lost touch with college football. I would follow players like if a team got a good freshman. You'd be like, oh, okay, he's not going to play this year, but he's going to play next year. And then we'll watch him, and then he'll get to play more. I have lost a lot of that. And the same degree, same with the NBA somewhat. But So I'm catching up on my college, college playing. But here's your franchise one-year practice squad question. All right. Would you rather you have – you have to choose what you would do. 
college coach goes to the pros out of retirement head coach or son of legendary coach what would you throw i'm saying i'm thinking because there's a lot of shanahans in the league there's there's a belichick in the league aside you, aside from that mullet Bel- I, I haven't seen anything impressive about the belichick son you know? i don't think his headset is plugged into anything <laughs> that, that, i think <laughs> hey, hey sunday night talk investigates is belichick's son is he in Who's he talking to? <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know what, what TV show this is from, but they walk in, they're sneaking by, and the security guard is is talking on the phone. And he's like, no, you tell him. I said it's not okay. And they're like, right. what's he talking about? And the other kid lifts up the phone cord, and he's like, it's not plugged in. <laughs> so we don't know if Bill Belichick's son, Steve Belichick, is talking to anybody on the other end of that uh, other end of that headset all right college coach who goes to the pros out of it comes out of retirement head coach uh like dick vermeil style or son of legendary head coach where would you rank these guys where would i rank these guys okay uh, you can you can cut the son of a because i'm you know they have take it out shanahan you know he's i'm not he hasn't even come close to the greatness that you know his father won two super bowls in a row with denver um uh but but you know he's not he hasn't you know he's not bad he's he's held he's he's shanahan in san francisco has at least built a name for himself aside from his father you know but then you've got the you know the the andy reed's sons of the world that are there you know almost killing people mm. on the world you know forgot about that they had their own uh their own right and in reality he, and, but he had no business whatsoever being on any on andy reed's staff it, he only got there because he was his son true so just avoid it all together and 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 just some of the legendary coach you can you can throw out um uh and we haven't seen many right i mean can you think of any i mean shanahan's a, maybe a success story maybe um but, um, we got the bum Phillips, Wade Phillips. He was a yeah, good. That, that was a good one. Not a Super Bowl coach, but uh, a long career to his own, uh, to his own doing. You know, Rex Rex Ryan. He built up some good some good defenses. Uh, I I think Rex Ryan was more a, a, a fantastic defensive coordinator than, um, you know, the uh Buddy Ryan, the but you know Buddy Ryan, um. <clears throat> Uh, they had Rob Ryan was you know the the brother right. Um, so uh, okay, so it, there's been a successful model uh, in the past, but you're you know, taking them out. Squad. You're giving them the practice squad. I'm gonna I'm giving the uh, yeah I'm giving them the the practice squad. Okay, what about out of retirement head coach versus college coach who's now in the pros? <sighs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the college ones too. Get rid of I. <laughs> Good, good college coaches to the pros. Who do we got? We got Pete Carroll. Harbaugh, Harbaugh did well. Harbaugh was he college? Bo- oh, that's right. He was Stanford. He was Stanford. We got Harbaugh. Um, I can't think of any other off the top of my head. And then out of retirement head coach would be Vermeil. Um, there's got to be a couple more in there because coaches get fired all the time. I would give franchise to the college coach going to the pros. Because you got to give them a couple years, but they have to commit. The coaches don't commit anymore, right? So I like the college coach to the pros, and then one year deal out of retirement head coach. Because sometimes that gives your team a boost just from morale, right? Like, oh, look who's back! Look who's back! He's gonna bring back, gonna bring bring back the old ways, even if it's, if it's just for a season. Yeah, yeah. So. so- I, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I, I I'd go college one year deal, and I'd say out of retirement. I don't think you lose that that magical touch. You know, mm. I, I thought I thought Gibbs Gibbs had some successful Gibbs. Years. That's another one. Yeah, you know Parcells. I, I, Parcells is another one. Parcells is another one. So I'm okay with the uh, let's let's bring him back. Okay, I'm gonna we're in agreement on that. Okay, for the challenge this week, like I said, I've been doing a lot of college football studying, watching. This week's challenge is head coach or TikTok star. 
I'm going to give you two names. You're going to tell me if the which one is the head coach and which one is a TikTok star. Are, are you right. talking from, from, from college right now? These are current college head coaches, yes. Okay, let's go. All right, here we go. Your first matchup is James Franklin, Zach King. Which one is the college head coach and which one is the TikTok star? No clue who... Uh, Zach King is James Franklin, head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Oh, you got it. You know James Franklin, head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions. You're right. Zach King, TikTok magician, made a website in 2008 offering tips on how to use an editing software. You got, you got that one right. All right. Matchup number two, James Charles, Manny Diaz. Um, Manny Diaz was the fired coach from Miami this last week. Mm. Uh, and, and the other one I have, I'm assuming is you're telling me is TikTok. James, uh, you're right. Manny Diaz was head coach of Miami. James Charles, 22 year old makeup artist, the first male ambassador for cover girl. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> How about that? that one? Look, look him up. Just Google the name and you will see, <laughs> you will see how that makes total sense <laughs> that he is a male ambassador to cover girl. All right. Third challenge. Jason Derulo, Dabo Sweeney. Dabo Sweeney, of course, the head coach from Clemson. Jason Derulo is a singer. Ah, you got both those right. Yes. Dabo Sweeney, head coach at Clemson. Jason Derulo, singer, songwriter, was involved in a controversy when he wore swim trunks and people said they could see his boner. <laughs> well, you know, about Jason Derulo, I remember from the Stern show, uh, Howard pulled a lot of his, uh, oh. of his music because he, he Howard was talking about how um, all his songs started with, he would say his own name. He would scream Jason Derulo on like, every song that he... <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Three for three on this challenge. All right, last matchup. Kyle Whittingham, Brent Rivera. Kyle Whittingham. Oh, that sounds... That's, I, I want to say, and I'm probably wrong on this one. I'm going to go 50-50. I want to say, I, I don't know what school, but I'm pretty sure I heard Kyle Whittingham somewhere on SportsCenter. Okay, you're going Kyle Whittingham is the head coach? Yes. Kyle Whittingham, head coach of University of Utah. You got it right. There you go. Brent Rivera. All I have for Brent Rivera is he's 23 years old and has 16 million TikTok followers. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and, because, right. because, and because of that, he probably has more money than Kyle Whittingham, which is sad, but okay. Might be. It might very well be. Like I said, I'm into college football as of 48 hours ago. What's your favorite bowl game? Just take it. Just pure pick a bowl game. If you can only watch one bowl game, what do you go with? Obviously, okay, I, I, I got to take out the Sun Bowl, okay, because I live, I live a minute walk away from the Sun Bowl, okay. That's true. I, How many Sun Bowls do you think you've been to in your right, lifetime? I mean, I've, in I've probably been to like eight, would be my guess. I think I'm probably more. I think I've probably like been to like eight of the last ten, maybe. Oh, uh, really? I didn't know you'd been to that many. Yeah, eight of the last ten. But um, I would say, I've been, I, yeah, I've been to at least 13. Wow. I've been to probably eight. I can't tell you I remember any specific matchups of any of them. What I can tell you, on multiple of occasions, I had friends – who were going to the Sun Bowl, we tailgated, they got so wasted they couldn't go to the game. I can tell you that on multiple occasions that has happened where someone never even made it to the game from the tailgate. The Sun Bowl is an interesting one because while the attraction is that we have good winter weather, it rarely is nice weather. It's usually cold and windy and sometimes rainy. Right. So that's was... tricky about the Sun Bowl. Ironically named the but... Sun Bowl. I, my, I, I remember my first Sun Bowl was back when it was called the John Hancock Bowl. Um, it was um, A&M Pittsburgh 1988. 
really? 88 ain't in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a weird matchup because some bowl usually gets the Pac-12 and... Yeah, back then they had some interesting matchups, but I did... But but then I remember getting the next year, I want to say Michigan State, um, USC. USC. I remember that game. Yes. I do remember. I'm, sure yeah, you guys went. I'm sure you guys went. Probably went. Uh, some bowl got some cool matchups, like cross country ma- matchups, because it was West Coast against Midwest, essentially. So it was cool matchups that you would get to see. Um, ranking bowls, it's got to be Orange, Rose Bowl, and for some reason the Fiesta Bowl seemed to gain gain steam in the late '90s and became just yeah. a juggernaut of a bowl. But it's got to be between Rose and and Orange. I'm going to go with just the history, the Rose, obviously. Yeah. Um, And only because, obviously, I think the college playoff, which I think think that (coughs) college football needed a playoff system. But it really, because of that, it really took out the emphasis of the Orange Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Rose Bowl. Um, And I think we saw that kind of like in the BCS. You know, that that kind of started to – it wasn't as a, as important. I did kind of like the fact that you one of those games was going to be the championship game, but you know that wasn't the case. You know, I think what USC UT that was a the championship was a Rose Bowl game, right? Yes, yeah, it was probably one of the greatest Rose game Bowls in time. recent memory. But it may be the greatest college game of all time. Um, and, and yep. so, but so I want to say it, it is the Rose Bowl because I'm a Texan. I also I watch the Cotton Bowl. Um, right, that's the so Texas you know Bowl. You're right, Cotton Bowl. Can I tell you? I'll, I'll tell you real quick before we move on. I watched Army Navy in its entirety yesterday. I watched a little bit of that too. I, I enjoyed it. They they I, I, a lot I, more I, than I, I thought they would. I, I this was the, I always tell myself when I see like maybe five minutes of the game every year. I say, you know, next year I'm going to watch the whole damn thing, and I never do. <laughs> this year, this year I did, and it was a great game to watch. Also, what Army and Navy do as of recently that really takes the game up a notch is the uniforms. They go hard with yes. a really cool themed uniform they, every year. They outdo Oregon and everything they do, you know? Yeah. So I love the uniforms and those, those, those uniform designers are really earning their paychecks. Yeah. Navy had almost a captain America esque theme and on their helmet, they had the gun metal and they had the rivets on the helmet looked really good and an and army, an army army looked like you could have sent those guys out to you know out in the field and yeah. they would have been ready for combat they were badass too they did like the desert camouflage yeah real that was simple so real earth tone colors and they just did battle they just went head to head and it also which takes it to another level is the students the fans in the stands wear their uniforms it looks so cool when they do the shots of that so army navy game I don't think there's anybody who is, is going to sit down, at least not enjoy five to 15 minutes of that game. I'm with you on that. Great uniforms. Great uniforms in the Army-Navy game. All right, Sunday MVP. I got two candidates for the Sunday MVP. MVP number one, overtime in general. Yeah. And MVP number two, Jimmy G. I uh, gave him a Sunday MVP. Yeah, he I, won a I, big I, game. You, you gave him the award. I'm going to strip him of the award. So for, <laughs> for about five minutes. Um, I can't believe you're so not in on your own guy. No, I'm not. And uh, uh, I'm going to give the uh, 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 Sunday uh, MVP to Tom Brady. Oh, are you? Tom Brady. Was it because of the little fight, the chest bump? It was, it's just Tom Brady. You know, he's, get, he's getting to that point in the year where he is psycho Tom. Are you secretly jealous that... San Francisco didn't get Tom Brady every day. Really? <laughs> you would have loved to see him in that gold red uniform running out. I, I can't, I, I don't disagree that it would look cool. What about if, okay, say we part with Jimmy G who do you want in the San Francisco QB spot next year? Could you go like, Hey dude, let's go all in for Rogers. Well, or would no, you say like, not, let's draft not, or what? No, it's not. We drafted, you know, Lance. Oh yeah, I forgot so about that guy. We gotta, we gotta give him a shot. So you want Trey Lance next year? I want him starting next year. 
You don't want anybody else. You don't want anybody to trade for anybody. You don't I want to take want a run at Kirk trade. Cousins. <laughs> I want – no, no, no. Don't get Kirk Cousins out of here. <laughs> I'm going to change my make you angry argument every week to the Niners trade for Kirk Cousins. No, don't do that. That's... Just every week. This is going to be my, my argument every week. So you, Trey Lance, you're going to go all in on Trey Lance next year. All in. All right. Fair enough. Uh, way too early coach of the year. Now we're getting dangerously close to just, <laughs> this just being early coach of the year. I got one nominee, and I specifically do not know his name. I will not learn his name. Coach of the Chargers. Coach of the year. I give it to him. Say the Chargers get in the playoffs. I'm, I'm, um, still, I'm still sold on Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, coach of the year. Coach of the year. You know what? I got to find it. Remember years back when Bill Belichick was wearing – a headband <laughs> it'd yeah. be cold it'd be cold out and he would wear like a skier headband <laughs> yeah bill, bill belichick and my dad dressed the same way they have the exact same wardrobes just oblivious to the outside world just what do you got i'm wearing it see you later and then when you say why are you wearing that their response is what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean uh let's move on everybody's favorite category it's sweeping the nation Legal ramifications, your question this week, do you have a defense lawyer hero? Essentially, is do you have a Michael Jordan of defense lawyers? Is there a Babe Ruth of defense lawyers that you have? Or is someone you look up to? Yes, I do. And, 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 and it's my hero, my personal hero, uh, is, of course, my mentor, Dolph Quijano. Um, what he's meant for my career and so much that he's taught me. I can never repay him for what he's done for me. So that's that's definitely my personal Michael Jordan. Um, from a a a you know national, if you want to talk about you know famous, um, you know uh, when when he was in his prime, um, F. Lee Bailey. I mean that that's the that's the Maverick. That's the you know uh, he 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 kind of the sad thing is he fabulous lawyer and he kind of ended in you know in some disgrace i believe he was disbarred um mm. at the end of his career um but but he he was you know the top trial lawyer in the country for 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 quite for quite some time so you uh, have like a local hero and the local hero you have like personal interactions with what, what do you mean the lo your local hero like you studied under this person who yeah, is this yeah, i worked i worked under dolph uh i worked I under see. dolph i still do i mean technically i still do i mean are the cases i think we have maybe two cases together from you know because he's basically retired um so yes he is my hero uh he is my michael jordan he's my my tom brady you know he's 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 up there but there are some other ones here locally uh, uh joe spencer uh, Tom Tom Hughes has been uh, a, a great influence. Jim Darnell, uh, Gary Weiser, just guys that have really gone to battle for clients. Um, guys, I really admire. Um, uh, but but my my Michael Jordan is by far uh, off Kihano. What I learned under him, he, he you know I tried cases with him, and the thing I most appreciate about him is is a lot of these uh, uh, older lawyers that had. Um, you know, younger protégés, uh, it, it took them a while before they they gave the protégés the car keys. Uh, it was the very first witness on our very first big trial together, and Dolph just looks at me and says, "Hey, I got a doctor's appointment. I'm gonna you take the first you take the first more part of the morning." And I, I, I was I was shocked. I had I was like, "What what are you talking?" He he trusted me, and and I think that meant a lot to my career. So that's that's definitely my hero. Yeah. So you have a local one. And I talk yeah. to him about every day, even every day. What makes a great defense lawyer? Would it be different from a prosecutor? Are those different skills? You know, I, you know, there are, there are some, there are some big differences, the way you approach a case, but I think the, you know, the skill is, I think what makes them great is how far you're willing to go to do the right thing to see that justice is done. OK, and, and that's what I think the hallmark of any trial lawyer is. You you, you got to do what's right when it's all said and done. And and I think that's that's basically what 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 my heroes have, have taught me. Would you just love or would this be a goal if one day you're coming out of the courthouse 
and just the rush of reporters come up to you trying to get the quote after the court case, after the verdict, yeah. and you and you get to like give the speech of uh, how your client was innocent and how you proved it today, and and you thank the jury. Would would that be like a dream? You just get to pontificate. You know, I, I've already done. I mean, Dolph has already, and Dolph was so great with that too. Um, you know, when I was just you know a baby lawyer and I was trying these cases with Dolph, Dolph would tell me, Hey man, I'm done. Like I'm trying to retire soon. And, and, and he would let me get in front of the cameras and, and he made sure of it. And he said, no, I'm not talking to them. You are today. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so he let me experience that uh, and uh, on, on many occasions. So I'm always going to be grateful uh, to him for that too. Wow. You were like the Tom Brady and he was the Bill Belichick. <laughs> yeah and, and you know and we've we have had our disagreements but it's been um, but again and you know the, the great thing about uh him is that he's still always a uh phone call away and i i've always just appreciated that well that's why we ask you the tough questions on legal ramifications you always have the insight uh legal ramifications now on to monday night Good one this week. Rams at Cardinals. Rams, uh, or sorry, Cardinals giving two and a half points over under 51.5. I'm going the Rams, parentheses. The Rams are back. Stafford all the way. McVay, young coach. I say the Ram. I'm taking the Rams with this one. Uh, it ain't going to happen. Cardinals by a touchdown. 20, I object. 27-20. <laughs> 27 20 that would be the over as well uh did we lock in our predictions this week oh yeah we did i predicted new england versus tampa bay in the super bowl you predicted dallas green bay tampa bay arizona will all win their divisions do you do you care to to hear your previous predictions sure you got burrow wins a playoff game (laughs) <laughs> followed by the very next week, Cincinnati does not make the playoffs. <laughs> that was crazy. And in this week, uh, you predicted Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Arizona will win all their divisions. My predictions, Colt McCoy will start a playoff game. That's still in play. <laughs> Indianapolis will make the playoffs. That's in play. And New England versus Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl. So, predictions are plenty. But, the Sunday night talk, pretty good week, 14. It's good. shaping up. December football is great football, and we got a couple of weeks to go. Yep, I'm glad. For the Sunday night talk, this was week 14 in the NFL for Omar Carmona and Patrick Ramirez. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Good night. Okay, that is it. That is the episode. That is the Sunday night talk for week 14 in the NFL. How'd you do? How was your team? Did you win? Did you lose? Do you think you will be in the playoffs? Have you totally bagged the season like me and are looking towards drafts, trades, uniform changes? Where are you at? I don't know. It's a long season, so a lot of us are distraught. But hey, Christmas is coming and there's games. Legal ramifications. How about that this week? Omar going deep on his apprenticeship into becoming a lawyer. His Michael Jordan of defense lawyers. I knew he would come through with that story. Hey, me doing stand-up comedy this week, December 15th, Wednesday, 8 p.m. I am at The Loft Ensemble. Another late night show, tonight show, is happening. I'm doing live stand-up comedy. So come see me, come hit me up, let me know you're coming, I will get you in there. So for Omar Carmona, for me, Patrick Ramirez, this was the Sunday Night Talk. Thanks for listening. I will see you next week.